As we have seen, a class is a category to which a group of objects may belong. Each class is distinguished by its features, its attributes, and operations. These attributes and operations are shared by the objects in that class. Now here again is our classifier symbol, which is a box divided into compartments. The top compartment contains the class name, and that's the essential element that you need to show in your diagram. You don't have to show all three compartments, only show them if you need to, but you do need to show the class name, and you see an example of that with our employee class down here. The middle compartment holds the attributes of the class. Attributes are properties. Specifically, they're properties that a system tracks for all instances of a particular class. An attribute is like a field in database design. And here you can see the syntax for an attribute. You want to start with the attribute name, and that begins with a lowercase letter. If there's more than one word in the attribute name, you run the words together and capitalize the first letter of subsequent words. Then we have a colon, followed by the attribute type such as string or integer or minutes or whatever makes sense as the attribute type. Now you don't have to include the attribute type. You do need to include the name, but this information can be helpful. Attributes, as you can see here, are listed one per line. Using our employee class, let's look at some examples of attributes. For each instance of the employee class, the attributes include first name, which would be a string, last name, also a string, employee ID, which would be an integer, and salary, which we would want to show in dollars. So these are the different properties, or if you were designing a database, the different fields that would go into the employee class. Classes also have operations. An operation is some function that an object can do or that is done to the object. You'll also see operations referred to as methods, and it can be helpful to think of them in that way. Operations go in the bottom compartment of the classifier, and they have this syntax. The operation name, and again, similarly, beginning with a lowercase letter. If there's more than one word, run them together and capitalize the first letter of subsequent words. So we have the operation name. And then in the parentheses, we have a list of parameters, if any, followed by a colon and the type of value returned. As with the attributes, the operations are listed in their compartment one per line. So with our employee class, here are some possible operations that we might have. We have hire, set salary, which passes an integer, get salary, which returns an integer, or terminate. So these are the functions that the class can do or that can be done to the class. One more thing about attributes and operations. You can show visibility for each attribute or operation. So for example, you might have uh, public attributes or public operations, public elements in other words, and public means that this element can be used, can be seen by, and can be used by any other class. And you show a public element with a plus sign in front of the name of the element. Similarly, an element might be private. Private elements can be used only by the class that owns them. Private elements are shown by a minus sign in front of the element's name. There are two other kinds of visibility. We have protected visibility, which is shown by a pound sign. And protected visibility means that it's visible to and usable by a subclass of this class. And finally, we also have package visibility, shown with a tilde. And package visibility means that only classes in the same package as this class can see and use the element that's marked with package visibility. And for more on packages, see the movie of that title.